What is up, beautiful people? Trending topics of Vision Connect Media. So, you all remember how the Ghana movie industry used to be back in the day, right? Oh, it was one of the best. All over Africa, yeah, we were leading. I remember the first movie that came out. Uh, what is the name? What is the name? Yeah, one of the old movies. Ah, oh, good. It used to put Ghana on the map. It was, I mean, the Ghana movie industry has been pumping a lot of money into the country, bringing in a lot of profit. It's kind of one of those uh, industries that's keeping the country moving. The tourism uh, industry, the hospitality, and the movie, the music, that is what is keeping things going. But recently, things got bad, you know? Somehow, it just dipped down, it went south, and then COVID-19 came. Things. Oh my God. But uh, Yvonne Nelson was in, in an interview recently and she talked about it. And what she said, I'm really happy about what she said. You know, she talks about how she is not waiting for anyone to come and save the Ghana movie industry. She's going to keep working. You know, she's not looking for anybody to come fund it. Well, if you're a company, you want to fund, you want to fund it. If you're a company, you are uh, a private investor, you want to invest into it, fine. But she's not going to sit down and just cross her legs and wait before someone will come in and save it. Right? She funds her own movie. She makes profit. And she's happy that uh, companies like Netflix and Amazon Prime are around. Because, yeah, they actually make things move on. And she has hopes that the, the industry will get better. That is good. I like it. That's awesome. I agree with her because most of the time people keep complaining. Some actors keep complaining about how the industry is bad, is this, is that, but they're not really doing anything. Instead, they just pack up and they just go to other places and they work. Well, I'm not really against people going to other countries to work, but I mean, the grass is not always green on the other side. You can see what you can do about this and put your hands to work. Yeah. Recently, another actor was complaining, I'm not going to mention the name, was complaining about how uh, actors in Ghana are underpaid. I agree. Some producers are really stingy, but others to pay. That some uh, companies actually give you what you are worth when you do the job. So, thumbs up to Yvonne Nelson. She's always leading the fight, you know? I think she's awesome, and we need someone like that. We need people like that in this country to keep us going. Yeah. So, <laughs> mobile SIM re-registration. Have you even done yours? Man, I, I don't know. Biometrics are already in the system. You have to go and re-register and do your biometrics again. I mean, I get it. It's for security reasons. Most of the time, crimes that are being committed, you know, over the phones and all that, they need to be able to track you, find out where you are and do it. Some CIA, uh, FBI kind of move. I agree. Is, is beautiful but there's a group of uh, notable Ghanaian personalities who identify themselves as concerned mobile network subscribers right they are saying <laughs> that today this Tuesday that nobody should make phone calls or send text or anything they should boycott it all starting today I actually started around 6 a.m. that's right and it's supposed to end at 12 yeah their fight is to push back this uh, SIM registration because they think it's illegal. And you need to understand this group is made up of lawyers and people that work in government and all that. Notable people, top, top people. They said, do not make calls or do anything. I don't know how far this will go because <laughs> the government is really, really on this. You know, on the radio I was listening, someone was complaining that uh, someone would just wake up and create a software and try and lobby it and will get approval that they should come and buy the software you make money then go ahead and push with re-registration yeah there's already biometrics we already have this in the system the voters the uh, passport and all that we already have it so why should we go back and go through the process for security yeah use the biometrics we can use it again but it's all good i mean so i hope you have not made for cause or syntax if you have your school you can still stop now not that i'm supporting it i'm just telling you what's going on you get it what is trending <laughs> a Ghanaian circuit court has jailed four drivers 120 years for robbing a businessman at Pobiman in amasaman the crime was committed in 2019 but they've been jailed 120 years now uh wow when I saw the headline, I was like, wow, four drivers. Is this like 
Fast and Furious or Need for Speed, you know, driving four cars on the highway and just pull in front of the, the businessman and his family, then this one behind, you know, some stunts. But apparently they went to the house to rob with cutlass and guns and all that. Mm -hmm. They've been charged a conspiracy to commit a crime, unlawful entry and uh, having, I mean, possession of uh, firearms or weapons to commit a crime without lawful authority. And so they can charge you with all these uh, uh, crimes, unlawful entry, all that. Yeah, that's what it did. The businessman was in his house with his wife and his brother and his kid. And uh, according to him, he heard, he heard his uh, alarm from outside. His wall has some alarm system, security alarm system. He heard it, he went to the door, but before he could get outside, he saw flashlights underneath the door. So he got curious and he opened it. My question is, why do you open it? When you know it's midnight and everybody that's supposed to be in the house is already there, why you see flashlight down there and you don't call out and ask questions? Who is there? What are you doing? Before you open. But apparently, that's what he did. Opened it and then someone came inside with machete, with a mask on and covered, <laughs> covered the businessman, his wife and his brother with a blanket. I don't know why he covered them with blankets, but hey. He went to the next room and he locked up the man's children went on and did their deed that's what they did but they've been caught thank god and sentenced to 120 years that's cool it makes you think like as a country where are we going <laughs> what is the plan how do we move forward you know to use uh toll booths as public urinals you want taxes as a country to move it but then you end the toll booth, use it at public urinals. The toll booth usually bring in what? Six million cities every month, making it like 72 million every year, more or less. But then you want, how is it even gonna work? So the vehicles or the buses will be driving, get to the, the middle of the road and someone say they wanna pee. So they'll pack in the middle of the road for someone to get out and go use the urinal. How is it gonna work? Africans would like to joke in times like this, you know, when frustration and things are going so hard, you say, oh, let me make jokes with this one. I hope they are joking because this doesn't make sense at all. And this doesn't, it doesn't show any seriousness as a country. I don't know. On social media, Facebook especially, people are going crazy. Some are even regretting voting for the current president and his government. It's crazy. I am not a politician, but times like this, it makes me wonder, like, what the hell is going on? How? <laughs> Which way? Ah, oh, man. All right, guys. So this has been Trending Topics on Vision Connect Media. My name is Ron. For more details, check the description and uh, follow, like, share, comment. You know, it's always good to have you on board. So uh, until next time, I say God bless you. Stay focused and bye-bye.